Mika ringing the bell. Uh, tomorrow is World Cancer Awareness Day. It's a day to come together, honor and remember everyone affected by this insidious disease and to take action to change the future of cancer forever. Our beloved Mika Madolo, who's been away from our screens now since June, joins us to share more about her personal journey against uh, her fight with lymphoma. Mika, good to see you. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing amazing, George, Bill. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Sam. I love you guys so much. Uh, happy World Cancer Day. It's tomorrow, February 4th, 4th, 2022 for World Cancer Day. That was in October. I rang the bell with my last chemo treatment. I just finished my radiation at the end of December to start off the new year. I finished radiation, which is good. And now I'm healing, doing a lot of tests uh, for my non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And it's just, you know what, I'm just going strong. Some days are great. Some days are hard. And I'm not going to deny that. And right. mentally and physically, really, really hard. Like some days I'll feel fantastic. And then some days I'll just feel like, you know, oh, I can't do it. But I, I persevere because I know I have so much love and support. And with you guys, too, I feel all the love and support. I'm so happy to see you guys. Good morning. Well, Mika, it's been nine months since we've seen you. You look fantastic. How do you feel today? And like, where are you at today with your recovery? Uh, I'm at, uh, I'm, I'm close to week five of recovery after radiation. So just doing a lot of tests now, doing blood work. We're doing a lot of scans. And that's just continuing for a while. Actually, it's going to be continuing, actually, for me for the next five years. So I'm technically not cancer-free, but I am in recovery and considered remission until March. I have a big test coming up in March, and we'll see some more to say that I'm in full remission. But, um, yeah, so I'm technically in remission called no evidence of disease completely just yet. But it's, still, it's looking good. It's looking really good. I'm fighting. I'm staying strong. I'm staying healthy. The doctors are amazing. I'm so yeah. grateful for all of my doctors at Markham Stovall Hospital, at South Lake Hospital, up in Newmarket as well. That's where I had my radiation treatments. I did a lot of radiation there. I couldn't take a lot of pictures there, but at my end of radiation, I took some fun pictures right at the end to show that my hair is growing, and I'm so happy. I got tattooed. I got my first I tattoos yeah. for radiation. So I've never had tattoos before, so I got four. And they kind of like, I don't know if you remember Friends where Phoebe got the world on her shoulder. Right. Well, I've got four planets around my body. So that uh, was fun. I was scared to get them, but that was fun. I know you have that Maybe frog tattoo fun. on your ankle, Mika. Come on, you're not telling anyone about that. Mika, I'm just kidding. We speak for, I speak for everyone, I think, by saying we miss you so much. CP24, Breakfast is a Real Family, CP24 generally. And, you know, you can't really do anything alone. You were talking about the, the staff of the hospitals, I guess, becoming a new family. But what about your family as well, going on a bit of a parallel journey with you? How have you been able to rely on them and kind of help them get through this with you? Oh, my gosh. My husband, my sons, Corrado and Adrian, my mom and dad. Honestly, they've been my pillars, my best friends, a lot of my rest of my extended family as well. Everybody has been so amazing, so helpful, so caring. I mean, pretty much my mom and dad were here every day helping me with the kids, with the housework. Just because my body is not back to normal just yet, it's getting there. And I am I am working out. And I'm getting stronger but it's not strong enough. It's going to take me, they said, about a year for me to get to about 98%. Mm. So um, some days I'm feeling fantastic. Some days I feel emotionally and physically drained. Like I just feel like, okay, I go, 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 go. I get so excited some days that I'm like, oh, I have all this energy. I'll walk for an hour and a half. And then that sets me back. Like mm. it just some, one little thing will set me back yeah. for a few days. So it is hard. Um, everyone's cancer journey is definitely different. Mine is different where I've had it. I had it in my chest and in my lymph nodes. Um, it's a blood cancer that I do have and you can't see it, but you can feel it. Um, I, I've lost my hair, but it's growing back. What do you guys think? You look gorgeous. You like it? Mika. I like it. <laughs> you look stunning. You do. I, I, I know you Thank well. Thank you. I, and so yet. I know how much health is important to you. I also know you love going to your property. Where do you find those moments of greatest solace where you just feel at peace in such a chaotic journey uh, and you can just be like, I find that hope. Where, where, where do you go? Um, I go to my property a lot. Yes, I, I haven't been there since the winter because the winter is so bad. The roads are so bad and it's been a lot for radiation. I haven't been able to travel too much because of... Um, you know, um, it was a really hard toll on me, the radiation. It's very, mm. it weakened my immune system. 
and my immune system is very, very weak. I'm immunocompromised mm-hmm. um, for the next while I will be. And so I'm just a little hesitant to go places. But when I go to the property, I'm on my on my dock and I, mm. I'm, you know, just breathing in the fresh air and loving that or walking through the property. I have, I have a few acres there. So walking through the paths uh, makes me really happy with my little guy and my, my son, my older son, and also my husband. We have a great time there. Um, when my parents and I sometimes go for a walk too, they, we go out for a walk in and around here in Pickering. It's just fantastic. So walking and nature really helps ground me besides mm-hmm. doing Pilates because I do a lot of, I love Pilates. Um, this week has been a bad week for Pilates for me, but last week, man, I was like on it. I was on it. So yes, yeah, so some days I'm really strong and when I'm strong, I really absorb it. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Mika, um, everybody yeah, misses you around here so much. All, all the viewers, you know, we constantly get uh, messages from people wanting, you know, to well wish for you and just, you know, where are you? Uh, let's bring in Nick and, and, and Jen and Adju now, too. Uh, they'd like to say hi as well. Hey, Mika. Hey, oh, it's Mika. so great to see oh, so you, Mika. So happy to see you. Hi, yeah. <laughs> Nick and Jen, welcome to the family, Nick and Jen. I'm so happy to Thank see you. both of you. Welcome it doesn't to feel the family. Love yet. you guys. You're going to love this family. No, oh, thank you so much. Yeah, it's, just, you. It, it's not complete yet, so we can't wait to get you back here. Mika, I, I really want to ask you, too. I mean, I, I, you know, we love you. You do look fantastic, and I'm so pleased to hear how well your recovery is going. But you, you just mentioned there about, you know, being immunocompromised. And, of course, you've been doing this in the midst of this pandemic. And I wonder, you know, we saw you ringing the bell. Uh, you're wearing a mask there. What what difference has it made, the, the fact that we're in the middle of a pandemic? Because you, um, amongst more than any of us on the screen right now, must be feeling it much more differently because of that you know, sensitivity, that compromise that you have now. How has COVID sort of impacted you and impacted your recovery? Um, it's definitely impacted my recovery. I mean, uh, thankfully, um, in when I first found out what I had, Mark Silva Hospital was really quick to find out what I had. I was in the hospital for a while. And then going to the the treatments, I was allowed to have Claudio. So Claudio was the only person that I was allowed to have. I know others were telling me who have had cancer were allowed to bring more than one family member with them to have support. But it was just me and Claudio and then the nurses and the doctors inside the hospital. It was very, very different um, compared to what it's been like before going to a hospital. So when we go in, they've always checked to see if I was okay. There's a lot of questions that they ask us, which is fantastic. It makes us feel very safe. They want to make sure that we're all safe. And then up until about October, Claudio was allowed to come to the hospital with me. And then after October, after my last chemo treatment, I was only able to go in by myself. So I would get dropped off at the hospital and I had to go in myself and they had to check me out before I I got into the hospital. And that was it. That was it. There was no one allowed to come in with me. It's very lonely. But at the same time, you know that the doctors and the nurses are doing their best. And they did. They did amazing. And they're doing great. I'm so honored to be a part of Markham Stovall Hospital and also South Lake Hospital with their treatments and the doctors. Dr. Amanda Lee and Dr. Woodrow Wells from Princess Margaret Hospital. Fantastic. And honestly, they did the best they could with what they could. Mm -hmm. And that made me feel safe. At the same time, it was lonely. We were not allowed to take pictures. We were not allowed to bother the radiation therapist because of getting close contact. Everybody was was safely covered and prepared. Like the pictures that I showed you for my radiation uh, completion was actually in my little change room because we were not allowed to take off our masks or anything. So mm-hmm. I took a quick picture with my robe on without the mask because I was in that little room without anyone around me. Mm-hmm. So it's it's very different. Um, I know it's very lonely, but at the same time, for, as an immune and compromised person, I felt safe. I felt safe that no, there was not a lot of people around me because around groups now, I'm very, very hesitant. I'm not allowed to be around a lot of groups right. still wow. uh, for a long while, but that's okay. You know what? I'm doing what I can, what the doctors have told me, and I'm taking their advice. Mika, I'm so happy to see that you're getting the support you need, the treatment you need. Uh, we miss seeing you here. I certainly do. I remember you. Uh, so many times you walk into the newsroom. I was just so envious of your mask game. I hope you're uh, keeping it up there. You had the best face masks. And now you've got the best right. hair. I think you look fabulous. I wish yeah. you the best and can't wait to see you again in real life here. Well, well, Mika, like I just want to say um, I love you. I've known you for so long. And uh, I just want to say that I've been... Honestly, been keeping you my thoughts and prayers. We do a positivity circle, me, my mom, and my husband for you every week. And I just want to say I love you. And I know you're a fighter, and I know you'll get through this. You have such a good support system. And I'll always be there for you. We'll always be here for you. We love you here at CP24. And honestly, I can't wait to see you in person. And when I do, I'm going to give you the biggest hug, honestly. Absolutely. I love you so much. 100%. Oh, love you guys.
Great Thank seeing you, Nika. Jen, so Nika. good to see you. Oh, George, love you. Oh. So <laughs> Russ, Jenna, Roy, I love you guys. I miss you guys so much. Can't wait to see you soon. I'm going to so get there, yeah. honestly. Hopefully in the next few weeks, honestly. Okay, awesome. Well, can't wait to see you that day. Yeah. Thank love you, Nika. You. Take care. <laughs> see you soon.